What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. We hope, as we always hope, that you and yours are doing well and staying safe during this uh, pandemic. Today, I'm joined again by Tom Horner, our Corporate Rigging Inspection Manager, because today we're going to talk about the differences between welded and mechanical repair shops for alloy chains and what the differences are and what might be the best for your business. So, Tom, thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate your time again. Uh, no problem, and thank you for having me. It seems like this is a specific problem that some people are facing. Can you tell me, you know, Maybe unpack the the two. You know what's what's going on, and what are the differences between the two uh, repair shops, and why they are so unique in the way that they service uh, customer needs. Very important to you know explain the differences. Well, obviously, field inspections are uh, tied to the process that takes place after the inspection, which is potential repair or replacement of the items. Right now, we're talking about the repairs. Alloy chain slings are the most repairable uh, lifting device out there. You have your welded alloy chain slings and then you have your mechanical. Mechanical are obviously put together with mechanical coupling links so from end fitting to end fitting you might have your master link, your mechanical couple links attached to a leg or a number of legs all the way down to your end fittings which could be your hooks or even below the hook devices. With an alloy chain sling you'd have your master link and then connecting your master link to your leg or legs is going to be welded coupling links and that could be uh, you know sub coupling links all the way down in order to make it mate to the to the legs of the chain properly and again welded coupling links at the bottom attaching to your hooks and or you know your below the hook devices or whatever end fitting there are so when we're in the field and we do the inspection you run across both types of assembled alloy chain slings and Mazella can fabricate both but when you're dealing with the repair of the items What's important to understand is that there are two different types of repairs and a different cost factor, let's just say, associated with each of them. So if you take an alloy chain sling, and I'm gonna use an extreme example uh, just to really relay what I, what I wanna get across, is let's say you take an inch and a quarter quad, which is a four-legged chain sling, and let's say it's 25 feet long, bearing to bearing. You might have an extremely large master link on one end, your coupling links that are welded to your four legs of chain, all the way down to your, your hooks at the bottom. Maybe it's a QOF, which is a four-legged with foundry hooks at the bottom. Very expensive chain sling. You could be talking a chain sling in the ten dollars to $15,000 range when purchased new. So the customer is using this chain sling and they notice during one of their lifts that a link appears to be damaged on one of the four legs of their chain. And they want to send it in for an expert to look over and they send it in to our Cleveland location. Our inspector is going to lay that chain sling out on the ground, uh, make sure it's laying evenly, all the legs are matched up, uh, and he'll go link by link, fitting by fitting, to inspect every inch of that chain sling. And let's say at the end of the inspection, he has determined that there is only one link that is damaged on one leg of chain. What he's going to do is, is with the welding capabilities, we actually have the capability to replace that single link on that entire leg of chain with what's called a body link. We can cut out the old link, weld in a new body link, and perhaps that's all that needs to be done with the chain sling. Also, we want to understand is we want that chain sling to still match across all four legs. If we're welding anything into it or doing replacements of links and stuff, does that have any bearing on the capacity, on the capabilities whatsoever of that change? Like, is it a more inferior product after the repair than it was when it was, you know, initially damaged? No, it's absolutely uh, not inferior. It's just as it was when it was in perfectly good shape when, when sold as new. So a uh, great question though. So again, we want to make sure that when we weld in that body link, we want to make sure all four legs are going to sit evenly. So that's one scenario. If, if we determine that the body link is going to cause a little bit of discrepancy in that particular leg, we might have to weld in a body link across all four legs. Now you might think, well, that's going to cost me a lot of money. But let's think about how we would replace it if we were a mechanical only shop. If that chain sling was sent in and we did determine that it was still only that one link that was in need of replacement, a mechanical shop cannot weld in a body link and potentially save X amount of feet of chain. So let's say in your quad you had 20 foot of inch and a quarter chain per leg. That's 80 feet of inch and a quarter chain overall. 
which is thousands and thousands of dollars. If we can put in that body link, we're saving you all that length of, of chain to not have to replace. If we talk about the mechanical aspect of a repair, they're not able to weld in that body link. So best case is they might be able to replace one complete leg, 20 feet of inch and a quarter chain. Worst case is in order to get that to match properly, they might have to replace all four legs, totaling 80 feet of inch and a quarter chain. So if you look at the thousands of dollars that could be spent in the worst case mechanical repair to potentially, potentially the thousands saved by doing a body link only repair, you can kind of see the difference of why it's important to seek out a shop that can do both welded and mechanical repairs. The one last thing I want to end on is we talked about, you know, what I asked you earlier is if we make that repair, is it going to make it inferior in any way? And you said no. So depending on if it's a welded repair or a mechanical repair, how do we test that to make sure that you, you know, the, the user is getting back the sling that is going to be able to do what we say it's going to do and what they expect when they get it back? Let's just talk CM. Uh, Columbus McKinnon. In order for us to be a CM repair station, our welders actually have to send in test links um, to be qualified as a welder on CM um, products. That's their coupling links, that's their body links. But that's not only a one-time process, that's a monthly process where they're actually having to send in different size links every month for CM to audit and keep our welders compliant within the CM process. So that defines the welding standards. When we weld in uh, a coupling link or a body link, after welding, those are also heat treated to very specific requirements. And then after that, after everything's cooled, our employees will take that chain sling to one of our testers and they will test the fabrication by putting a proof load on that leg in order to test the capacity of their weld as the final check within the process. So anytime a repair is made, it will be tested before it's sent back to the user just to make sure that we send that certification letter with it saying that this is, you know, this is its capacity, this is what we pulled it to, to verify that our welds or our repairs will hold regardless? Absolutely. At Mozilla, we proof test all of our repairs, whether mechanical or welded, and that is absolutely the process. They'll get a proof test certificate backing all that up. So anything else that you'd like to say that you hadn't said on the, the differences between weld shops versus uh, mechanical repair shops? We just want to be, inform the customers that there are many options that, that alloy chain slings are highly repairable. Uh, the smaller, the more challenging it gets to, to save the dollars, but there are dollars to be saved there. The larger the alloy chain sling, absolutely the more capability we have at, at keeping that sling uh, in service and we have chain slings out there that have been in service for 20 30 years so there is definitely a long life expectancy to these if if used properly in the field and then maintained properly at the refer, repair facilities as they're sent in like any piece of equipment that you have right i mean this is this is a machine so if you if you're using it to the capacity that it's specified for if you're maintaining it and storing it properly you're doing your inspections to make sure that you know it's still in good working order these are things that yeah might be expensive up front and they might have little blips of cost here to, to maintain them but these things are, are lasting like you said you know 10 20 years depending on how you're treating these pieces of equipment so it's an investment in your gear to make sure that you're taking care of them properly and getting them and in, you know inspected and repaired when they need to be when you take an item like your LA chain sling and you do send it in for repair we're going to look it over top to bottom give you the best presentation on, on what we can do. Can we save it? If not, we'll quote you the replacement. But worst case, if it is scrapped out, hey, you sent it in, you know, we'll explain to you why. It is definitely worth the investment. Well, Tom, thank you very much for taking us through that. I really appreciate it. Uh, for all of you that are watching at home, I mean, we've at Mozilla done a lot to try to give you as much information as we can so you can better help your own team understand like different inspection practices. If you're wanting to get better at doing your inspections every lift, every shift before you use any piece of equipment there's a whole course focused just on inspections and then also if you do find a sling that's unserviceable and needs to be removed from service we have an entire downloadable checklist and guide that'll teach you how to dispose of damaged rigging equipment just to make sure that nobody else on your job site has an opportunity to use a sling that shouldn't be used so if you need those resources please by all means take those they're absolutely for free we just want you to be educated so uh, Tom thank you again for joining us I really appreciate how much uh, industry expertise that you offer to all the people and then for all of you watching uh, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And I really hope that you and yours stay safe during this pandemic. We'll see you next time.